Hey everyone, welcome back to the next episode of The Weekly Coder. I'm Chris, and in this episode we are going to continue on our Conway's Game of Life. Um, let's see, where we stopped off was saving, right? So, the last thing we were able to do was to just press the play button, check out what we've got, and then be like, hey, you know what, we need to save this, so because these changes are super cool and I want to save them. So I'm going to press S. And then we've got this debug to the console log here showing us all the zeros and ones that we have. Yep, okay. Just had to double check there for a second. Perfect. Okay. So now that we've saved our file, we want to be able to load that back. Should be simple enough, right? We've, we were able to save it pretty easily, so loading it shouldn't be that big of a deal at all. So let's go back to our game class and just kind of review what we've got here for our saving. So we're saving here. Um, the the meat of this basically is uh, using the serializer uh, class to serialize our object and then write it out to a file. And we're using our path here for that. So we will do something similar here with our load. So we're gonna do private void load pattern. And the way that we're going to do that, again, is we're going to say string path equals patterns. Right? That's our path. We don't need to check to see if the, cre <laughs> if the directory exists or not, because if the directory doesn't exist, it means we don't have a file. That means that we can't load up anything anyways. Uh, so I guess just to prevent errors, right, we could code this the right way and say, hey, if not directory dot exists path then that obviously means that um, we just return because we can't load anything if we don't have the directory because damn there's not going to be any files in the directory if the directory does not exist so what we'll start with is our xml serializer Going to create an instance of that. Only this time, we are going to deserialize. Right? We still need to XML uh, serializer. We still need to create that with a type of um, pattern to let it know that we, what we're going to deserialize. And we also need to add the new keyword here. And then we are going to create our actual path for the file name. So we're going to say, uh, actually we have already created path, so we'll just do this, path equals, um, or plus equals, test.xml, because that is, not text, test, because that is our file that we created here, test.xml. So then our path, test.xml. Okay, so that, that'll be our path that we're gonna reference when we load our file in. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an instance of stream reader, which is the opposite of stream writer. And we're just gonna say, whoops, new stream reader, path, and then we're going to basically deserialize our pattern. So we're going to create an instance of pattern and then cast pattern as the type of serialization that we're going to do. And we're going to deserialize our reader stream. Okay. There. And that's how we do that. We can then use uh, reader.close. And then from there, we can do the rest of. Uh, what we need to do to actually load the data, right? Because we have the data now. 
we have the data and that data lives inside of our pattern instance in the uh, pattern string property, okay? So all we need to do now is we need to take that data and we need to, um, let's see, we've already got all the cells loaded. So we just need to tell it which cells are dead and which, some, which ones are live. So that should be pretty simple, right? We just iterate over the string. The one thing that we have to think about is that our string is now just a string, right? It's a string of characters that we need to iterate over. That string of characters is completely unaware of how wide our screen is and how high it is. It doesn't matter how high it is, but it does matter how wide it is because what we need to do is we need to reconstruct our um, our grid, right? Because that data is, like I said, just one string long. It doesn't know where it needs to end for each uh, new row. So what we need to do is we will iterate over our string. And to do that, we're going to use uh, the for each loop. And we're going to basically for every character that's in our string, for every single character, and pattern, which is the class instance, pattern string, which is the property, right? So we're going to iterate over our pattern string. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say if c dot to string, because we're going to convert the character to a string, is equal to one. If it's equal to one, then um, we need to store that somewhere. So let's create a variable. Um, so bool is alive. Just to keep things simple. So if it equals one, then we're going to set is alive equal to true. Right? Otherwise, if it's not, then we're going to set is alive equal to false. So at this point, all we need to do is think for a minute. We're going to need to keep track of x and y as we loop over this for each loop because we're going to have to increment x We're going to have to increment x and y because x we need to find out if we're at the screen width, right? So let's just do this. Um, and let's do int x equals 0, y equals 0. So we both we start them both out at 0. And why? The value is never used. Oh, because we're setting it, but we're not using it yet. Okay, that's that's fine. So inside of this for each loop, um, we are going to get our grid, and we're going to set x, y. Dot is alive equal to whatever the value of is alive is. And then um, we are going to need to increment x by one because we're going to, like after this for each loop, like after this iteration, we're going at the next iteration, we need to be in the next character, which means that x is moved by one, okay? So then what we need to do is we need to make sure that we check if x is equal to the screen width, right? If it equals the screen width, then we need to reset x to zero because it's reached the end and it's gonna have to start its count over. And what we also do is at this point, we increment y by one, right? So if 
let's just say for instance um, our screen width is 10 right so we're gonna do 10 whole iterations and every time that uh, the iteration happens X is incremented by 1 so after 10 iterations it's gonna say oh well we, we, we've reached our screen width so now we need to set X to 0 and we need to set Y to 1 so then our grid will then appropriately say okay well X is uh, 0 now and Y is 1 so we're going to set that part of the uh, the grid equal to whether or not it's enabled or disabled. Hope that makes sense. So, yeah, I mean, that should really be it. That should be all we have to do to load. So let's go ahead and find our user input again. And we're going to create another user input input dot get key up um, key code dot l so l would then be for load okay so and this will get more fancy uh, because right now we're literally saving uh, to a static file and we're loading from a static file so the file name is always going to be the same basically we have an opportunity to load one or to save one and to load that same one that's it we can save the one and load the one that's that's all we can ever do so at this point we should be able to save and stop and then play and um, let's go ahead and make some changes and then press the S for save and let's close that or stop it and let's play it again and this time you see it loaded up the original again we're gonna press L for load and nothing happens why do you think that is? Well, let's do some troubleshooting then. So first of all, L, get key up, load pattern. So that's all good. So I guess what we should be doing here is we need to make sure that we actually get our pattern string. So let's log that out. So we'll do debug.log um, pattern, pattern string. So now we'll close. I keep wanting to say close. It's stop. So we're stopping and we're playing. Okay. So now if we look at the console, we've got nothing here. If we try to make a change and then press save, we'll see we've got this whole string of numbers. And then let's just make a change again and let's try to load. So loading happens. And it looks like it looks like it loaded everything. Let's look at the scene view here. Oops. Let's zoom in a little. That's the wrong direction. So that should be alive. It is. But it's not showing that it is. Oh! 
we're doing that wrong. <laughs> what we have to do is um, be smarter. <laughs> we can't manipulate that directly because that property is not supposed to be manipulated directly. So what we need to do is um, call the method set alive and then do this. All right, back to Unity. Yep, I pressed that twice. So now if we do this again and we press S, we have our console output here that shows us that we did that. And now if we remove this oops, and then press L, and there it is back again. So uh, we know for a fact that we can now save and load, which is awesome, right? So we can make changes however we want. See, we can uh, add more everywhere. Let's add as many as we want. And then say, oh, this is a frigging masterpiece. We're going to save this. So let's press S. Saved it. Now, even if we stop and we go back in, it's going to load the original, right? And if we press L, it's going to load all the changes we made because it's loading it from that XML file. So, I think with that, we are going to stop it here. And in the next video, though, what we'll do is we are going to create some dialogues. And those dialogues, um, we'll start with the, the load dialogue. Okay. What that one will do is it'll basically allow us to see what files have been saved and select a file that we want to load instead of always saving and loading the same file name because that is completely pointless. You get one save and that's it. Uh, <laughs> so we want to be able to save as many as we want. And that's the way to do it, is to be able to manipulate what you're looking at. And then finally, what we'll add is the, um, the save dialog so that you can actually write the name of a file that you want to save. And that'll be in the video after that. And then after those two, I think what we'll do is we'll go into um, making this work for uh, GL, uh, WebGL, because the loading and saving of files for WebGL are uh, kind of different. You can't use the I.O. functionality of C Sharp um, because the software basically, uh, or the, the WebGL player, Unity, uh, runs in the client's browser, so we can't directly access the disk to save our files. Um, that would be bad for, for them, really, really bad, because you could save whatever you wanted to on their computer. Um, and that's breaking all kinds of security issues. Um, so what I'm going to show you is a different way of doing that, and uh, one that's still very efficient and really, really cool. So hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Comments go down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to check out my Patreon. I put all of my source code and all of the project files there for you guys to download and follow along if you want. I will see you guys in the next one.